What's up you guys? So today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different than you're usually used to seeing. A lot of you guys actually comment on our videos and point out on a lot of our videos how you guys really like the production quality and you know the the types of shots we get first of all thank you for that like we really appreciate that a lot of work does go in is, into each one of our videos um whether it's you know just like a simple just hang out video or whether it's uh, an actual car meet or a event we're covering or an install um we try to get creative and and do as much as we possibly can with whatever we have so by no means is this saying that we are like super good at um, uh, film at you know videography and editing and cinematography and for those of you who want to get into something like this or are just interested in the process behind it um, what we go through in making every single video um, and this is kind of the template that we use for every single video that we do um, whether it's like on paper or it's just in the back of our heads um, so yeah and one more thing i want to thank you guys really quickly for 4,000 subscribers that is so awesome um we really appreciate every one of you guys and uh we're gonna keep pushing this thing as far as we can so um expect a lot more stuff i know it's been kind of slow lately but the reason it's been slow is because we've been working on so much stuff for this channel so um just bear with us. I gotta make this quick because this light is slowly dying on me to my left. So the first step that we normally go through um, in creating a video is obviously going to be the plan. That is definitely one of the most important steps that you guys need to take if you want to do a successful video is plan everything you possibly can. Um, countless times we've you know encountered wanting to make a video and then the day shows up where we're actually supposed to make the video and we haven't really planned anything out. So, I mean, write stuff down, write ideas out, um, you know, planning is, is really, really essential if you want to make sure you're getting everything you want um, in the video and you're not missing any shots, you're not forgetting anything. Um, and it really helps organize and create an outline for what you're doing. And I'm not saying every time you have to go and like write an outline for a video, you can just have an idea in your head, but make sure you put some thought into planning out what exactly you want to do. Is it going to be a car meet? Is it going to be uh, a car review? Is it going to be just an install video, a car show, like um, you're covering an event surrounding cars or just anything in general? What certain things do you want to focus on? Um, and then make sure you remember those things so that when you actually go to shoot it, you know, okay, I'm gonna shoot the cars, I'm gonna shoot some of the people, the event in general, or if it's an install, I'm gonna get this angle, make sure to show this. You know, you don't have to do any of these things, but it really, really helps um, when you're actually going to shoot the video and then edit the video. It all helps and comes in handy. So make sure when you're planning something, expect to shoot literally everything. I mean, like, you know, it may seem obvious, but you know, when you get to something like a car meet, it really pays off to have more footage than you need than not enough footage. Shoot, not just the cars and not just maybe like talking to some people that are there and about their car. I would say shoot the people, the location, what's going on in the location, you know, a lot of B-roll. Basically just plan on shooting literally anything you find. Um, trust me, when you're in the editing process, having more to grab from even if it seems random is definitely better than not having enough so a lot of you guys have been asking you know what kind of equipment do we use and it does not matter the equipment that you have oh my goodness the equipment is only as good as its operator you can use a 5d and not know how to use it and then have the quality be down here and use you know your iphone or um, just a simple point-and-shoot camera and really know everything about filmmaking and about getting shots and angles and depth and stuff like that and have it look way up here so you know it, it honestly does not come down to the equipment I mean sure if you're trying to cram more pixels on your screen and it's not always just about having the best image quality I mean it's so much more than that it's content it's how you shoot things the angles and like I said the depth that you create in the video within editing I mean it's it's endless honestly so now that we've talked about planning and equipment I want to talk about what shots you want to get 
Now, this again is completely up to you, but for us, when it comes down to it, it depends on what exactly you're shooting. A car show, for example. Establishing shots are really, really good um, to have, and it's establishing shots are basically um, shots that help the person watching know where they are and what's going on and what they're going to be watching for the next few minutes. Um, so if you're at an event, get some wide shots of the event or if you don't want to get wide shots and you want to get close-ups, make sure you get things that are um, very obvious you know, of what's going on. Don't just roll into a video getting shots of cars and people are like, what's going on? You know, have, you know, some kind of establishing shots. Um, again, you don't have to have these, but it's definitely something that I would recommend doing. But again, it all varies in the situation that you're in. And also, if you're at an event, get just random stuff that don't even relate to cars. Like I said, the, the surrounding area, you know, what's going on, the people that are there, the food that's being served, the 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 people that are playing music in the background it all makes them feel like they're in that surrounding and they understand what's going on better and it's not just car shot after car shot after car shot it really helps break up the flow of things and make things flow a lot smoother so now i want to talk about the editing now this part is probably one of the most daunting to some people because you know it's intimidating and i understand that and um, we've all been at a point where we're trying to do something and we're at the very start of it and we have no idea and we feel completely lost. So if you guys have never really done editing or you're not really familiar with the whole editing world, um, don't be scared by it. YouTube is definitely your friend in this case. Um, I've built my whole career in my life off of YouTube tutorials. I mean, that's how I started out um, editing gaming videos, literally. Um, and then I've gone on to actually make it a career for myself. Um, I've never taken any classes with editing, um, so hopefully that should inspire you guys to uh, realize that you don't need like a degree at film school. Yes, it helps, and yes, it will make things easier, but it also takes a long time and it costs a lot of money, and I was in a position where I didn't really need that. so. Um, I just built a lot of my knowledge off of YouTube tutorials and um, this is where I am now. So um, it really just goes to show if you're, if you don't know anything about it, just look up tutorials. If you have a question, just type it into YouTube and chances are, or Google, and chances are, you know, you're going to find some type of answer. So two programs I would really suggest. Adobe Premiere is definitely a really good program to be using. If you don't like Premiere and you don't like that style, there's also going to be Final Cut, um, Final Cut Pro 10, um, or if you're really old school and hardcore, go Final Cut Pro 7. Um, but I wouldn't really recommend that since they don't support that <laughs> program anymore. Um, but Final Cut Pro 10 is definitely more like an iMovie type situation with a little bit more professionalism um, integrated. So um, it's really up to you which way you want to go. Um, I personally use Premiere um, and the whole Adobe Suite. Um, and if I really want to get into effects, I use After Effects. Um, that's what I feel most comfortable in. Um, but Premiere is what we primarily use for all of our videos for just the basic editing. And one thing that people, I think a common misconception about editing is it has to be complicated. Like the more complicated and uh, complex and sophisticated it is, the better it looks when it's really not that case. Really complicated editing can look good, really good, but if you don't if you don't really feel comfortable in what you're doing chances are the simpler you make a video the better it's going to come out that means draw out your shots don't you know cut to the music like all the time um <clears throat> that's something that i'm definitely guilty of if you you know have are familiar with our videos you know i definitely get a little bit carried away with cutting sometimes but i have fun with it um, but there's definitely something to say about shots that are drawn out and shots that linger a little bit longer than you might expect. That's that. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about within the editing process um, is color grading and color correction. Now these are two very different things. Color correcting is making sure that the tones of your video are in balance, that you're not having too much reds and you're not having too much greens and it's everything's how it's supposed to look in real life. And color grading is adding a tone to your, um, or a, a tone or an overall feel or a, um, 
a temperature to your video. Stylizing your video is more of a color grading. So color correcting and color grading go hand in hand most of the time, um, depending on what the look you're going for. And they can really make your footage look way better quality than it did without the color correcting and the color grading. So I'd say somebody who's a great example of using a lot of color grading on their footage and have it look absolutely amazing is Dustin Williams. If you don't know who he is, check him out. Um, I will link him in the description. He's one of the best videographers that I've seen on YouTube um, who is also in the world of cars. You probably have heard of him. So that's one example of like going more harsh on the color grading, but then also having it look really good still um, and not just making it look like a muddy mess. Um, and then if you want to stay clean, you know, I tend to try and keep our videos a little bit cleaner because I'm not quite as confident with my color grading skills yet. Um, so I try and just do more of color correcting and just making sure the levels are right of the video, the color is a little bit is, you know, correct. Just as an overall um, theme for this whole video is have fun with your editing and your film and you know making videos that's one of the most important things is enjoying it because if you don't enjoy it chances are it's not going to translate through the video and people watching aren't going to enjoy it as much so that's pretty much it I hope you guys enjoyed this video I'm sorry this is probably like ridiculously long um, if you guys stayed this long, let us know again. If you are still interested in this shirt, let us know because it is going to be launching soon and uh, we just want to know feedback for how many we should order, um, you know, what sizes we should order. So if you guys are interested in this shirt, let us know for sure. Um, and so that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys again for watching and um, leaving your feedback on this video. We really appreciate it and we will catch you guys in the next one.